desire to learn has been engraved in humans since the beginning of time, and schools have always been associated with learning, until recently. The ever-growing problem of school violence has become more prevalent now than ever before, and the changing perception of school safety can inhibit students from reaching their full potential. Good morning, my name is Katamari Bias, and my project, my presentation is on the perception of school safety. One aspect of school safety is victimization, which includes bullying and theft. Victimization has been around for decades, and many people have come up with policies such as anti-bullying policies and awareness in schools to counter this victimization. And it has also seemed to work. According to the National Center for Educational Statistics, the percentage of total victimization in secondary schools has decreased from 1995 to 2015. Additionally, the percentage of students ages 12 to, 15, 12 to 18 who reported being afraid of an attack in school has also decreased from 11.8% in 1995 to 3.3% in 2015. This shows that some of the policies that people are creating have actually seemed to work. But one question still remains. Can these policies be applied to school shootings? School shootings are the second part of school violence. And according to the Gun Violence Archive, unlike victimization, school shootings have actually increased from January 2014 to January 2018. In fact, according to the New York Times and Time Magazine, there have been approximately 200 school shootings since Sandy Hook. And out of those 200, 63 uh, have resulted in at least the death of at least one person, and 16 have been classified as mass shootings, in which four or more people were shot. The, per ne the per negative perceptions began to, uh, began to appear after the shooting at Columbine High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Before the Columbine shooting, many people thought that school shootings did not apply to them and that they were very rare. However, Ellen Delera of the Family Education Planning Center at, at Cornell University uh, led a Small research high school in rural New York, New York. She surveyed the students before and after the Columbine shooting and found that after the shooting, many students were afraid of being secluded um, in areas of the school, such as hallways, restrooms, and even the cafeteria. She also found in some of her interviews that many students felt that teachers, staff, and administrators were unaware of what was happening in the school. And as a result, they questioned whether the adults would do anything to, prevent, to protect them in the event of a major catastrophe. So this mistrust of teachers, staff, and administrators led to um, more negative perception, and it led to fear and anxiety. According to Andrew Grover of North Nazarene University, um, increased fear stimulates level of the amygdala, which controls uh, the fear response in our bodies, and it inhibits response in the hippocampus, which uh, uh, the hippocampus, which is responsible for short-term and memory, uh, short and long-term memory. So there's a direct correlation between uh, fear and anxiety and uh, memory retention. So if you have more fear and anxiety, then you have uh, less memory retention, which can be a problem in schools. Also, the amount of stress correlates with the uh, with your performance in schools. The, a higher stress level cor correlates with uh, decreased performance, leading to panic, anger, a breakdown, and eventually burnout. One way that people are starting to counter school violence is through, or, is through events such as March for Our Lives or the National School Walkout. And a prime example of this is Emma Gonzalez, uh, a survivor of the Majority Stoneman Douglas High School shooting at, in February 2018. Uh, Emma Gonzalez has spoken up about restricting gun laws and um, she's a prime example of how students can be involved um, in this issue to come up with different solutions. Many, however, many groups such as the NRA state that students are not qualified enough to provide those solutions. However, Schlesinger in his book, Historian as a Participant, states that people with more personal experience and firsthand experience um, should work together with historians or people who, ha who have studied the topic to create better solutions. In his book, he writes that to take part in public controversy, to smell the dust and sweat of conflict, to experience the preparedness of decision under pressure may help toward a better understanding of this situation. One, there are many solutions to counter school violence. However, a lot of them have advantages and disadvantages. Um, and not one solution can be used 100% in every situation. The first solution is physical surveillance in the form of weapons deterrence, like metal detectors and randomized searches. This method is very unpopular because randomized searches and metal detectors can actually increase the fear of students in schools and therefore lead to lower performance. 
Also, students can always get by um, randomized searches, and metal detectors, although efficient in airports or malls, um, will not uh, held well, be held well in schools. The other aspect of physical surveillance is security guards. And although people can argue that security guards also increases the fear in students, um, this has shown, this method has shown to work in the past. For example, in Granite Hills High School in Arkansas, uh, there was a student who brought a gun to school to, sh uh, to start a school shooting, and a, a security guard noticed, tackled him to the ground, and took his gun away, which prevented further violence. So since this method has shown to work in the past, it can work in the future. Another method is zero tolerance policies, which are set, uh, which have set consequences to action, such as suspension or ex expulsion. Um, Delera, in her in her research study, she also interviewed teachers and administrators. Sixty-five percent of them agreed that zero tolerance makes a significant contribution to maintaining order, and seventy percent of them agreed that zero tolerance sends a clear message to disruptive students about inappropriate behaviors in school. So although this view is only with teachers and administrators, um, they agree that it does work because students see the implications of their actions beforehand, and so it leads to less violence. Some other solutions that are mostly stu more student-based include student profiling. So it's similar to criminal profiling, but to a lesser extent. In student profiling, um, people uh, write down the names of students who have committed acts like this in the past. Um, to see, um, to show that it can happen in the future. And this uh, leads to a controversy because many people argue that uh, with student profiling, teachers and administrators will have a bias towards those students because those students' names are already written down. Um, another solution is mental health counselors. Many people argue that we, don't, we do not have enough mental health counselors at the school uh, to provide a safe space for people to uh, share their ideas. Um, and counsel them because many people who are uh, involved in acts of violence um, have a, a mental health disorder. So by implementing mental health counselors, it can solve that problem. Another solution is gun control. So such as, uh, for example, Emma Gonzalez, she was uh, fighting for tighter restrictions on gun laws. And this method is highly controversial today. And the last solution and the most simplest is see something, say something, which um, you, you might have heard in your uh, school. It's basically if you see a, uh, a person doing um, an activity, the, um, a sketchy activity, then report it to uh, teachers or administrators. Um, this is, and there's not one solution that we should use. We can integrate uh, many different solutions to counter school violence. For example, we can use see something, say something, the policy, and we can also implement mental health counselors in schools while also um, increasing security guards and implementing zero tolerance policies. So in conclusion, the, the topic of school violence um, is very controversial. It has many different solutions that can be used. However, in the, in the long run, as long as uh, we stick together and we participate in uh, different events such as March for Our Lives or National School Walkout, um, it will be beneficial um, that in the future, maybe just as victimization, it can, we can decrease the amount of school shootings. Thank you. All right, let me ask you a couple questions that I can. First up, um, how did you select the strategies you used to gather the information and then were they effective strategies? Um, one strategy that I used is that um, I would research different articles on school violence and their effect on, um, uh, on on performance, and then I would go through and see that the the sources that they used in those articles, and look at those sources because those sources um, usually have um, more evidence than others. So that's what I used. Okay, and then um, explain the level of certainty you are about your solution to this issue. Um, um, I think I'm certain that well for this issue there are a lot of solutions. Um, possible solutions, but not all of them work in, in the same way at the same place. So I would say that I'm certain that some of the solutions, like see something, say something, or mental health counselors can definitely work, but others such as um, maybe zero tolerance policies or metal detectors may not work as well. All right, perfect, thank you.